I've got the Employment Minister Stuart Robert with me, who also had to uh, be quite nimble in the face of... <laughs> well, I was the receiving the minister, so I'm hoping, Kieran, that you've got the right question now. That's yeah, all I'm hoping. Now, we've got the right questions for you. In fact, let's start with this um, text message that was sent to a Cabinet Minister from Queensland. I just want to show our viewers this, because basically the, the message says you, you've had an exemption, an entry pass, to enter Queensland as a returning or new resident. Due to changes announced today... You now have to wait until midday, 8th of September 2021. Um, it, it, have you received that? Have other colleagues, you and other colleagues, received a similar message? I have. I've, I've received that exact message. But how many other thousands of Queenslanders have? How many other small to medium enterprise business owners? How many Australians working or Queenslanders working outside their state receive that? And suddenly they're going, what? I'm stateless? I'm locked out of my state to the 8th of September? I haven't told my wife yet, by the way. Uh, so yeah, it's, Good it's, afternoon. I hope she's watching. <laughs> it's, it's extraordinary. So, so what do you want to see? What should happen? Because Queensland doesn't have home quarantine, does it? You have to do it in the hotels, even if you're interstate. Yeah, there, there are varies. If you go to the last public health order, there are areas where you can do home quarantine. And, of course, the South Australian government's about to trial that as part of the National Cabinet. Now, I understand their 22 quarantine hotels are full, according to the Premier. Well, there's hundreds of hotels on the Gold Coast empty, so how about the Premier use those? Uh, and, of course, there's only 1,800 overseas. There's 3,600, give or take, uh, of other non-overseas residents in those hotels. You can't not have your own state people back in. You've given, given the rest of the eastern seaboard is in, in lockdown, mm. do you concede that this is going to be probably popular in the electorate that re-elected Anastasia Palaszczuk in a thumping election win not that long ago? I don't think it'll be popular at all. The, the Premier has just said to Queensland residents, you're not welcome home. Does that mean I get a rebate on my rates, Kieran? I mean, where? At, at what point does a Premier say, I know you live here, but he can't come home and gave citizens two hours' notice. And it's got nothing to do with Cabinet Ministers getting a note. It's got everything to do with thousands and thousands of other Queenslanders travelling who just got told, you can't come home. How, how is it impacting the, the, the situation, the ongoing COVID response? The, the business sentiment I read, according to the Chamber of Commerce, uh, its Pulse survey out this week, had some devastating... Uh, morale effects, at least, of COVID, even though there aren't lockdowns as we speak in Queensland. The CCIQ pulse that comes out all the time, it's the, probably the most recognised uh, survey in terms of business settlement, and you've seen a substantial drop for the first time, really, through COVID. And that's because Queensland is a net beneficiary of business from the other states. So Gold Coast, my town, 80% of tourists come from Sydney and Melbourne. So with them locked down, it's quite devastating the impact, and you're seeing this reflected. The Premier, the answer is quite simple, Kieran. The Premier just needs to come out and endorse the national plan that the Prime Minister has rolled out. What happens at 70%? What happens at 80%? When restrictions will ease? But just on that survey, though, I was reading through the impact on mental health, mm -hmm. and it says that close to half of all Queensland business owners, all their staff, saying it was contributing to mental health challenges. So we know we've been talking about the impact on kids at school. Mm -hmm. But for small business owners, SMEs, small and medium business owners, this is... It's huge. You'll also huge find... uncertainty. You'll find in the survey too, it also says that many small business owners are having to draw on savings to actually keep their business afloat. The average draw on savings is $110,000. Uh, and when a small to medium enterprise, when they talk about savings, they're talking about their house, Kieran, because that's the only asset that they put up. They're talking about drawing on whatever they've paid off on their house to keep their When you say alive. you want the, the Queensland Government to endorse the Doherty, the, the National Cabinet Plan, yes. the, the Doherty modelling, 70 80%. Correct. Fundamentally, they've already, they've already agreed to it at National Cabinet, haven't they? But they're quibbling over the fact that we do have larger numbers in New South Wales. Can you understand the fact that they are having second thoughts given the outbreak, which is ne nearly... A 1,000 in the last 24 hours. No, no, I can't understand it and I don't accept it. We've got a national plan. States and premiers agreed. It's a national plan as a contract with the Australian people. It gives the Australian people certainty and confidence, including business, and what happens at 70% and what happens at 80%. And we may be at those numbers in the coming months. There's no time, but with vaccinations at 300,000 a day, uh, we may be there quicker than we think. So businesses need to plan. Families need to plan. 
We need certainty, and certainty leads to confidence. Do you think there's been a shift in the overall political, uh, I guess, equation? As I said to you, Anastasia Palaszczuk re-elected with a big majority, Mark McGowan, you know, Emperor Mark, there's only two Liberals in the whole of Parliament. This, these have been very popular leaders with their shut-the-borders mentality. Are we going to see a shift in the political discussion here? Because we know your federal election's coming up soon. Shift's happening now, Kieran. The difference between... Are people willing to accept COVID cases in the community? That's yes. the bottom line. The difference between, at times, good or popular policy and not so, sometimes comes down to a date, i.e. when it's announced. Uh, and right now, and you've seen it, you've seen uh, Mr uh, Albanese had doing a, a conversion on the, the road to Maribyrnong, a bright shining light, suddenly realised the national plan is the way to go because Australians need certainty right now. Premiers need to back the national plan in. Employment Minister Stuart Robert, appreciate your time as always. Thanks.